Item number SCP-1027 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-1027 is to be housed in a standard liquid containment tank, immersed in a saline solution. Personnel are to avoid direct physical contact with SCP-1027, with the exception of feeding staff. SCP-1027 is to be given one fresh bovine brain per week. All staff involved in feeding of SCP-1027 are to wear Level 4 bioprotective equipment. In event of exposure to SCP-1027, affected personnel are to be immediately treated as instances of SCP-1027 and subjected to standard containment protocols. Description. SCP-1027 closely resembles the central nervous system of a human, Homo sapiens, that has adapted a life outside the human body. Specimens currently in the possession of the Foundation, measured from 1.1 meters, measured from the apex of the cerebrum to the base of the sciatic nerve, to 1.5 meters. Attached are the basic sensory structures associated with human functioning, including sensory nerve structures, eyes, and cochlea. SCP-1027 appears to be able to interpret signals from these systems in the same way as a human subject. However, all neurostructures within SCP-1027 are capable of movement to varying extents. This movement is most noticeable while SCP-1027 is immersed in a liquid medium. Neurocomposition in SCP-1027 appears similar to that of a human, with the exception of the neuroglia. The myelin sheath in covering the cells of SCP-1027 is approximately 300% the thickness of that found in a healthy adult human. In addition to this, glio coatings on neurons of SCP-1027 have been found to extend the full length of the cells, and are apparently permeable to neurotransmitter compounds. As a result, SCP-1027 is capable of supporting itself outside the environment of a living body, although it is most comfortable in a somewhat saline water solution. SCP-1027 seems to feed primarily on the neurotransmitters found within mammalian brain tissue. Consumption takes place by a process similar to osmosis, in which the neuroglia of SCP-1027 extract and absorb certain compounds. The exact process through which this is accomplished is unknown. Regular feedings render SCP-1027 much more docile, reducing the risk of exposure. However, it seems that SCP-1027 is capable of survival for extended periods without feeding, and it is not known at this time whether there is actually a biological need for these chemicals. When presented with live prey, SCP-1027 will apparently merge with its nervous system, draining neurotransmitter agents over time, leading ultimately to death. However, when exposed to a living or recently deceased, less than 12 hours prior to exposure human, SCP-1027 will instead infiltrate the brain through the auditory canal. Upon breaching the meningeal membranes, the neuroganglia of SCP-1027 will release a high dose of an apparently modified dopamine compound directly into the brain, in addition to an electrical impulse measured at approximately 150 millivolts. This combination has been shown to initiate basic brain activity in 90% of cases. The nervous system of the subject will begin to modify itself into a new instance of SCP-1027. The neuroglia thicken, and the entire central nervous system detaches from the host body by accelerated decomposition. To date, no specimen of SCP-1027 has been shown to possess any memories prior to becoming detached, and have a functional intelligence level equivalent to that of a lower primate. 